What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMB.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to update a record in our database app using Kinter and Python. All right, in the last video, we looked at how to delete a record. In this video, we're gonna look at how to edit or update a record. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out CodeMB.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee at just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've got our app. It's coming right along. We can add records. We can show records. If we want, we can delete a record. So in this video, like I said, we're gonna look at updating a record. And I thought we'd create a whole new window that pops up that has all of the updating, editing stuff in it, as opposed to trying to cram it more stuff onto this screen, which is starting to already get kind of full. Uh, we could do it all on this screen, have the, the record update right in these boxes, but that seems a little complicated. Plus, it allows us to create a new window, and that's kind of fun. We learned how to do that several videos ago, so if you need a refresher, go take a look at that in the playlist. So first things first, I'm gonna change this delete ID to select ID. So from now on, if we wanna delete a thing, we select it and then click the delete button. If we wanna edit it, we select it and click the select button. So I'm just gonna change that, that word right there from delete to select. So uh, let's find the delete button. Here it is right here. And let's go select, I guess. Okay. And uh, if this is the first time you're watching, this is the code we've been working on on all the videos up until now. So uh, you're gonna to wanna to go back and look and see how we made all this stuff. So now let's create another button right below this one and let's call it, let's go create a, an update button. I think update would be a good thing as opposed to edit, doesn't really matter. And let's change this uh, from delete button to edit button or update button, whatever you like. And it's gonna be in row 11. Now in our query field or our query function, puts the output on row 11. So we need to probably change this to 12 to put it below this button. That will work. All right, so instead of select record, we want this to say update record or edit record. And edit is smaller than delete, so the button itself needs to be a little bigger, 145-ish, probably will work. All right, let's save this and just give it a quick look to see if, if that worked. Uh, close it run it again, pull it on over, um, it's pretty close, maybe a smidge smaller maybe. And if we click show records, the stuff still shows up below, so that, that's looking good. Uh, so yeah, let's change that from, what was it, 145 to 144. <laughs> eh, we're just being picky at this point. Uh, still a little bit too big, maybe 143. I don't know, I'm just playing. I kind of like doing this stuff. All right, that looks better. So now, did we not change this delete ID to select ID? Uh, where is that? That is the delete right here, select ID. Forgot to do that. All right, save this, give it a quick look one more time. <laughs> okay, so now it says select the ID there. We could select, oh, that's why. This should still say delete record, not select record. All kinds of weird stuff going on this morning. Uh, all right, so delete record, not select record. Okay, so save this, run it one more time. Hopefully we got it right this time. All right, so select ID, we can select whatever. And if we wanted to delete it, we click that button. If we wanna edit it, we click this button. We haven't actually created an edit or update function, so let's go ahead and do that right now, or at least start to do that. All right, so you'll notice when we created this update button, I just copied this code. So the command is delete, we don't want that. Let's go uh, edit. Yeah, that sounds good. So now I'm gonna come up to the top of our program and any old where really, let's go define, edit, and let's give this a comment. Let's say create uh, edit function to up date a record. Okay, so like I said earlier, we want to create a whole new window for this. So I'm just gonna come up to the top of our program 
and I'm going to grab all of this stuff and we could just paste it right in here and make sure it's tabbed over. And instead of root, what do we want to call this? Let's call it editor. And so we need to change each of these root guys to editor. And the title, let's say um, update a record, I guess. I should really pick edit or update. I keep using both of those words. Uh, whatever. All right, so let's save this and run it to make sure that worked. After the day I've been having so far, who can tell if it'll work or not? Okay, so here we go. New window pops up, update a record. It says up here it's the same size as our old one, so that's good. Okay, cool. So now inside of that new window, we want the same boxes and labels to show up as that's in our main window so that we can, you know, edit those if we like. So I'm just going to come down to where we've listed those boxes here. I'm just going to copy all of this stuff. And let's come back up to our editor function. And I'm just going to paste it all in, highlight it all again like this and make sure it's all tabbed over. And since these are in different windows, we can probably keep the name the same, but I'm always kind of leery of that just because it's kind of confusing. So I'm going to go underscore editor and just rename each of these things underscore editor. So I'm just going to oh, let's use the mouse click and paste and click and paste and click and paste every single thing. And we could do the same to the labels, but we're not going to be changing the labels or anything. So I'll just leave those the way they are. Uh, we don't need a delete box, so we can get rid of that and that. So that's looking good. Okay, now these we want them to show up in the editor window, right? So whenever we create a thing, we always specify right here where it goes and these are all root by default. So we need to change each of these to editor. Editor, 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 same thing with the labels. Um, boom. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure everything's coming along correctly. So edit record. All right, that's looking okay. Now we want a button underneath that says save. So whenever we change these things, we can click the button to save those changes. All right, so let's do that right now. And we're going to come down here to all of our other buttons. I'm just going to copy one of those and bring it back up to our edit function. Now we don't necessarily have to do all of these things in the edit function, but I like to keep all my code sort of together. And we want to create a, a save button to save record, to save edited record. Okay, so we want to save record. And let's see, we're in row five. So now this needs to be six. And let's give that let's give it a 145 and see how that looks. Alright, so let's save this and run it just to make sure that worked. Edit record did not work. Alright, what do we do? Ah, put it in root. This needs to be in editor, of course. All right, so save that, run it again. Let's see if that worked. Edit record. All right, save record, it's a decent size. All right, coming right along. Now, next, we need to sort of propagate or whatever you want to call it, these fields with whatever record we have selected, right? So when we click edit, this will pop up and it'll have record number three, Tina Miller already filled in to each of these boxes, right? So how do we do that? Well, same thing we've done many, many things in the past. We want to come down to our, let's see, query function and just copy this stuff basically. Uh, yeah, copy all of this. So and come up here. And right at the top of our function here, I'm going to paste all this in. So we need to, 
Of course, as always, connect to our database, create a cursor, and execute it. Now we want to select everything. We don't necessarily need the OID. We're already going to know what that is from addresses. But now we need to designate the specific field. But before we do that, let's create a variable for that field. Let's call it record underscore ID and set that equal to what? Well, when we run this thing, the select box used to be the delete box. We come down here and get the name of that. It is, let's see, where's that? A delete button, no, delete box, right? Where it says select ID. We want that box itself, the delete box, which I guess is this guy. So let's copy this back up <laughs> to our editor. And we just want to slap that into a variable. And so we get that. Remember, we've get, we get things from boxes all the time. And now we can take this and reference it. So we want to select everything from addresses where OID equals, and then let's just concatenate that on there. That should work. Yeah. Okay, so now we want to sort of cycle through the result, the select result, and then put each of those things in one of those, in each of those boxes, right? So we've already kind of done this before. We used a for loop. So we went, let's see, we go for, well, let's make a comment. Let's go loop through results. So here we can go for record in records, right? And then remember, each item that comes out of here is a list item, right? So the zeroth item is the first name. The first item is the second name. The third, uh, second item is the address, city, state, zip code, right? So we can print out each of those things and we can do that just by uh, using an insert command for our boxes, right? So we have F underscore name underscore editor dot insert, right? And then we have to put a zero in front of it. We looked at insert when we learned how to do entry boxes, right? Those input boxes. And then we just put that thing, right? So we could just do this for each item in our database. So first name, last name, address, city, state, zip code. So here we just change this to L name and then address, city, state, zip code, right? And then we need to change each of these ones. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, so actually we don't need this code. I just, I just re rewrote it. But remember from our query, we're just pulling out each of these things, remember? Just like we've done right here, here, and here. Okay, so we can get rid of this. Now, there's one more thing we need to do. We've got these boxes created and they're below this for loop. So we kind of need to put this underneath. Oops, Let me get the comment. So I'm gonna copy this and let's put that underneath these boxes. Okay. So that should work. So let's save this and go ahead and run it. See how we did. So we need to show our records and let's say we want to edit Tina Miller. She is number three. We type her in there and click edit record. The new box pops up and her stuff is all listed in there. Now if we click this save record, we haven't actually built it to do anything yet. So how much time we got going here? All right, this video has already been about 15 minutes long or so. So I think I'll save that to the next video. It's a little bit complicated since we're updating several fields, several columns all at once. It's a little bit tricky, not too bad, but uh, there's a couple of things we need to look at when it comes to that. So we'll do that in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership, so you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. 
Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.